2022 Lexus NX 350 F Sport. This is just one of the multi flavors you can get on the all new redesigned NX for 2022. When the first generation came out in 2014, it lacked a lot of features that its big brother, the RX, had. But now for 2022 on this redesign, it is now leaving its bigger brother in the dust. Is the new NX better than the tried and true RX? Today we'll find out. <laughs> Hey guys, make sure to stay to the end so I can answer your questions about the all new NX. If you're new to the channel, my name is Kirk. I talk about Japanese and Korean cars. I'm into that. Smash the like button, subscribe, and let's get into it. Starting with the exterior, the NX has been redesigned from the ground up. Let's start with the front. This F Sport, of course, is going to have blacked out trimmings. We have large, glossy black, not only on the spindle gr grill here for the F Sport, we also have that additional lacy pattern over here for the functional air vents that flow around the wheels fog lights here at the bottom and a sporty silver lip spoiler this is the f-sport luxury so it's going to have the triple beam leds on there and you also have this gorgeous redesigned daytime running light and the front of the nx definitely looks very similar to its little brother the ux and the redesigned es and that's not a bad thing those vehicles do look pretty good we have paint matched wheel arches which were really hard to find on the outgoing last generation nx we also have 20 inch wheels on the nx with the bridgestone alenzas 235 by 50 on the 20 inch wheels it's good to see the nx get some really nice looking wheels because last generation i felt like it was lacking side profile the vehicle definitely looks bigger so this vehicle looks about as big as the first generation rx maybe even bigger f store badge on the side of course we have blacked out window trim which is lexus is finally getting on board here to match out the blacked out features on the f sport cars but unfortunately they forgot to black out one feature here and that's on on the side mirror black mirrors but we don't have the matching dark chrome like we have on the window surround now what's also new for lexus here are the digital latch doors all of them have buttons on the side to open them and it also helps with safety so you don't knock over bicyclists as they ride by you while you're opening up your door etc as we go to the back we have a light bar rear tail light not only that we have lexus typed in to the rear of the lift gate which replaces the lexus badge this is going to be a reoccurring theme for lexus vehicles as far out of the future as i can imagine nx 350 the first time we've seen 350 on the nx with the new 2.4 liter turbo we'll go over that next i like the cutouts here on the bumper and even though this is f sport you don't see any exhaust tips like you saw in the outgoing going nx we have one functional exhaust tip actually tucked underneath but it's very streamlined and it does look good from the back even though this is an f sport we don't have the f sport badge on the rear of the vehicle anymore underneath the hood of the nx 350 is a brand new 2.4 liter turbocharged engine replacing the two liter turbocharged engine that we saw in the outgoing nx this produces 275 horsepower 317 pound feet made it to an all new eight speed transmission which replaces the six speed transmission we saw in the outgoing model all wheel drive is standard on the 350 model now this is just one slice out of the powertrain options for Lexus NX. We also have the 350 Hybrid, which is 239 horsepower and around 40 miles per gallon. We also have the base model, which has the 250 engine, the naturally aspirated two and a half liter, can be had in front wheel drive or all wheel drive. Then you also have at the top of the stack, the 450H Plus plug-in hybrid, which is the quickest out of all of them, about 35 miles of plug-in range. And then you also get around 40 miles per gallon. And it, yeah, that's the total package. Those are going to be few and far between. This is going to be probably the volume seller as well as the 350H. Now, since the second generation NX is bigger than its last generation, we of course have more cargo space. Even when you fold down the seats, you're going to have more cargo space. Now, unfortunately, even though we have additional storage underneath uh, this hidden floor, we have no spare tire and we don't even have a jack underneath which was unfortunate but you have the, the signature lexus first aid kit <laughs> just in case you see you get stranded but hopefully these run flat tires hold true when you guys have a flat seats fold down of course 60 40 split as you would expect in a crossover the inside of this new nx looks nothing like the outgoing nx starting with the doors we have soft touch all the way down until the very bottom of course you have a little bit more rugged plastic the most surprising thing on this door is probably going to be the digital latch there is no door handle in here to open the door you just press this button and it opens the doors it's quite weird and if you don't want to do that you can double pull the latch twice and it mechanically opens up the door let's say if the battery is dead this being the f-sport we have a nice red soft trim around the armrest here and red stitching to accent the aluminum trim around the mark levinson 
speaker. The Mark Levinson sound system in here is loud as heck, sounds phenomenal, but this is the first Lexus I've been in where the Mark Lev actually makes things rattle. And it doesn't even have to be that loud. You hear some strange rattlings around the speaker grills up front, not really anywhere else. Once you push the stereo past about 50 on the volume scale, all the rattles fade away because the sound system's just so loud, so crisp, it doesn't distort us all at all. And even when I push this past with the bleeding edge of my ears, it still sounds good. And I haven't maxed out this system yet. I'd probably, probably need earplugs. So sounds phenomenal, but there's some rattles that kind of hold it back around 30 to 40 volume. Steering wheel is excellent. It's not the most girthy. You guys do know I appreciate a nice girthy steering wheel, but it feels excellent. Of course, we have a little export badge at the bottom of our steering wheel. Now, this being the top of the line around 55K, it has the heads up display. And with the heads up display, you get this customizable steering wheel which is pretty cool. It's the most advanced steering wheel I've ever seen on Lexus. It's also the most advanced heads-up display I'm seeing on any vehicle, regardless of the make or model. And although the heads-up display is excellent and the hologram of the buttons of the steering wheel pop up there, sometimes you have to press the button twice on the steering wheel to get to the next preset, for example. On the left-hand side of the steering wheel are going to be all your, your volume and phone and radio buttons. And on the right-hand side of the steering wheel are your heads-up display, your MID control, as well as all your safety features. It takes about five, 10 minutes to get used to, but it's pretty intuitive after that. And you can customize it even further through the big menus, through the big screen if you want to. So the MID behind the steering wheel, fully digital, it is pretty small and it's actually dim. And the plastic in front of it, you kind of have this bending plastic in front of it that gives you a lot of glares, which is unfortunate. And the 14 inch screen is absolutely massive. It's super easy to get to. So they've designed it where no matter where you're sitting in the driver's position, the screen is facing towards the driver and it's real easy to interact with. So you have your climate control at the bottom, which stays there. And then on the top essentially mimics a 12 inch screen seen in other Lexus products. So you have wireless Android Auto, wireless CarPlay in here, uh, resulting also in a wireless charger in this particular model. I haven't been successful in getting my phone, my Android Pixel 6 to charge on the wireless charge, but my wife's iPhone charged on there, no problem. And the iPhone integration is probably better than the Android Auto because it takes up the full 12 inch width, but I'm not gonna complain too much because Android Auto still works really well in here. If you didn't want to use your phone, you can still use uh, the built-in Toyota software, which uses Google's points of interest system. And it is really, really good. Take me to Chick-fil-A. Real time, I'm not gonna speed it up. Eight. Oh, I cut her off. So you she found see. some options here. I'm just gonna click A here and it's gonna take me there. So pretty easy. It's not quite as fast as my Android Auto, but you know, for whatever reason, if you don't wanna use that, your phone, the, the car system is really, really good. And it does integrate with the heads up display where my phone, when I put the coordinates in and I'm going somewhere, it doesn't integrate with the heads up display. Unfortunately, I don't know about iPhones. We do have ambient lighting in this particular model, which looks pretty cool. It's not overdone. It's pretty subtle, to be honest. I really only notice it when it's dark out. To continue the red theme, we have synthetic leather around the center console here. We have a real small shifter which I'm not a big fan of. I wish it was a little bit bigger. It just feels weird resting my hand on it. Um, it's Prius style. So you push it over up and down if you wanna go in reverse or drive. Some people don't like it, but I've been driving hybrids from the Toyota Lexus in for so long. It's no different than a normal shifter for me at this point. Two nice cup holders here, one keeping my Yeti in place. Then underneath the wireless charger that slides out of the way conveniently, you have a 12 volt and a bunch of additional space. USB-C and USB-A up front. And the seats are actually a big step up from the previous generation NXF Sport, which I felt were always too small. I'm not that big of a guy. I'm six foot one, but I'm pretty slender. And these seats feel perfect. They hug me on the sides perfectly. The bottoms are much wider than the outgoing seats. So that is a good thing that Lexus did compared to the last generation NXF Sport. And no, this NX is not exempt from the glossy black of today's era. We have it around the vent here. We have it around the big touchscreen. But the most annoying part for me is that it's around the shifter. I was driving this. I was blinded by the reflection coming from the glossy black around the shifter. It just doesn't need to be there. And it's going to collect dust and fingerprints and scratches. Speaking of fingerprints, the massive screen does collect fingerprints. And if the sun hits it just right, you can barely read the screen. So make sure you have a microfiber cloth wherever you go. A couple more things before I hop in the back. The volume control 
control knob is excellent. The radio integration through the menus is not the easiest to use, but once you have your preset set, you're never gonna really mess with it. But the volume knob just feels so good. The resistance is excellent to it. It's very satisfying. And it reminds me of the chocolate chips in like Rocky Road ice cream or moose tracks, if you know what I mean. Now in the back seat, I have plenty of leg room sitting behind myself at six feet one. We have two USB-C chargers. Guys, I feel like Lexus is finally in the modern era with USB-Cs. We also have a 12 volt back here to accessorize if you need to. We have a couple vents back here surrounded by glossy black, of course. And luckily we have the, the Mark Lev treatment on the speakers back here with a nice aluminum trim as well. Comfy armrest to, it's pretty much the exact same door up front, but just a smaller version back here. It's really high quality. Now, what confused me is that there's no bar on the side of the seat for the reclining Lexus second row seats, which is a departure from what was on the last generation NX. You just had a little bar on the side and you leaned back. These seats do lean back just slightly, but you have to pull the lever behind you and then push it back again. It's not as convenient, but at least we still have those reclining seats. You can also get power folding and heated rear seats, which is an optional package. I don't know if you can get it on the 350F Sport, but I know it's out there. Folding down the armrest, we have a couple cup holders and we have nice mat pockets on both sides and a soft back to the seats in front of me. It's a very comfortable experience back here. And we have a small drive shaft in the middle, but nothing that's intruding or doesn't take away that much leg space. Back in out of the review position, of course, in this top of the line for 55K, you better have a 360 camera. And it's definitely better than in previous past Lexus vehicles. Nice thing, it actually has under the vehicle uh, monitoring. So as you move over things, it will accurately put underneath the vehicle what is underneath the vehicle. So that's great. And surprisingly, even on this gravel road with these 20 inch wheels, these run flats, it's very smooth and I don't hear much going on underneath. Very nice Lexus. Doesn't surprise me because that's one of the intrinsic quality of Lexus. They're some of the smoothest and quietest vehicles out there. Now we're going to flip it into Sport Plus mode and just let her rip. <laughs> Interestingly, it didn't like that. It felt like it just held second the entire time. So that was surprising it didn't kick down into first gear even though i'm in the most aggressive setting the sport plus so even though that this is a sport trim vehicle the f sport does not give you more performance that would be reserved for what's called the f sport performance packages which there's only one available in the entire lexus lineup and that's the is 500 could we see something like that come to the nx eventually it's possible but for now we just have this vehicle, which is excellent. You, it is way more power than the outgoing model. And we also have adaptive variable suspension on this S-Sport. We also have, um, you know, sport tuned dampers. We also have a Yamaha stabilizer bar in the back of this vehicle. And uh, we're gonna roll out into this, in front of this school bus here. And yeah, we <laughs> have to slow down because the vehicles in front of us are slowing down. And the brakes in here, by the way, what a jump in brake feel and quality for Lexus. This brake pedal feels better than it does in the IS500. Now that vehicle, even though it's new, it's still based off of much older Lexus technology. This vehicle built from the ground up at Shimoyama Test Facility in Japan, this does have the Lexus stamp of approval for Lexus driving signature. And the steering is a little bit light, even if you're in Sport Plus mode, but it is very accurate and it's really eager to turn in and it is fun to throw this SUV into turns more so than I was expecting. Now we have a bigger engine in here and the fuel economy is not gonna be better really than the outgoing two liter. I'm getting, well, after idling, it's 22.7, but before that, before me doing the walk around and everything, it was definitely higher, probably in the 23s. So don't get your hopes up for high fuel economy in this higher performance turbocharged 2.4 liter that should be, you know, invading the entire Toyota Lexus lineup, getting rid of uh, the, the 2GR 3.5 liter V6. Now, not a lot of people are excited about that, but this engine is very capable. Doesn't have a great engine note, so I'll hammer it down again. But the response is, is immediate. I'm not even in sport, sport plus mode or sport mode, I'm just in normal mode. And that response was really good. I'm gonna do it again. There's a small delay. It'll, it kicks down a couple gears and it kicks down a couple more gears to get this vehicle going. It definitely feels 
like just a tick slower than the 10 speed auto in the LC500. Now, if I put it into sport plus mode and I hammer the gas again, it's maybe just a smidgen more responsive. Now that we're up to speed here going 65 miles an hour, it's not as quiet as I'd like it to be. And these run flat tires are a big part of it. You do feel some harshness coming through the steering wheel from them. And you do hear a good amount of road noise and chatter coming through the bottom of the vehicle. Um, you also have a little bit of wind noise. It's not, to me, it's not as disrupting as the feeling from the, the road and these skinny tires and, this, and through the steering wheel. So that's unfortunate, but that's what you get with run flat tires nowadays most of the time. No one's behind me, so I'm gonna get hard on the brakes here. Just a great brake feel. Big step up for Lexus. I'm gonna twist in Sport Plus mode. We're gonna... Van go. <laughs> We're getting there. We're gonna need it to 60. There's 60. 7.16. Yeah, that's, that's not bad. I know the, the 450H Plus is a, is a little bit quicker here with that instant torque and acceleration from the electric motors, but about seven seconds in good conditions here, uh, a little over for the NX350. So it's definitely faster than the outgoing model. You know, the, the best part about this engine is probably gonna be the immediate torque boost compared to the outgoing model that had just around 258 pound-feet of torque. This has about 50 more pound-feet of torque, and it's definitely gonna, you're gonna feel it most when you're passing people and just getting around town but it doesn't have all that much top end power if it definitely feels a little bit more like mazda's engine uh two and a half liter sky active g turbo there's no one behind us again we're going to give it one more try see if we can break that seven second threshold and go i felt like it was a better launch there 7.14 how close can you get in terms of back-to-back -back runs? I wasn't even on the same stretch of pavement. So <laughs> that is nearly identical acceleration run. So I don't think you're going to be able to get much better than 7.1, 7.15 seconds, 0 to 60, which is perfectly fine for this vehicle. All right, into the question. Sasan SMW is asking about sound decibels. And you know what? I've been using my phone, but I don't think it's very accurate. So I'm going to have to get some sort of recording system that measures volume so I can ad adequately test these, these sort of decibels for you guys, because I just don't think my phone's cutting it. Michael B, are electronic door handles annoying fad like Honda removing the volume knob or the future? I think of the future it takes some getting used to the weirdest thing about them is that when i unlock the doors here i don't hear the doors unlock in the back you you guys probably know what i'm talking about because it's very noticeable in any car i've been in when you lock or unlock the doors you hear them lock and unlock you don't have that auditory feedback with this new system so you press it and you just hope that it's unlocked luis milani wish you've gotten a chance to do the sooner bought one liked it uh, the tech is glitchy well i'm sorry you know it is over the air updates it's probably going to get better and better and better and it's not perfect the way it is but it's been pretty good for me in in this uh nx 350 with a 14 inch screen their car on delivery day had rattles and the mirror glass shook at 20 miles per hour yikes that's a nightmare well i'm glad you got rid of it and hopefully you didn't get stung too bad the only issues i've had with build quality and i don't know if it's just specific to the models the mark levinson sound system makes the front grills or the front speakers rattle and it's it's not it's more of like a buzz than it is a rattle it doesn't sound like door pad panels rattling it sounds like the speaker itself is like buzzing it's a weird sound and i don't think it's it's meant to be there sick one hey kirk absolutely plan on getting nxf sport but should i wait till 2023 have you heard any issues with the first model year of the next generation nx well that fits in with uh, luis's um, observations and mine is that anytime you have first model you don't care if it's the best elves out of the motomachi plant you know the takumi masters you still might have some quality issues and look at the new tundra like you guys are going to run into first year production issues on any car that's probably not like handmade to some extent and even then human hands have errors so you're going to have issues and it will get better over time waiting if you can is always going to be better because the market right now sucks mclaren speedtail is asking what is the premium package offer i'm just going to put it on the screen it costs about three thousand dollars 
um, and I don't know my packages nearly as well as I used to when I used to sell for Lexus. So there it's on the screen. There's quite a few things that premium offers and we're gonna move on to the next one. Matthew wants to see the lights at night. Well, I'll sprinkle that in for you. I'm not gonna do a night review. Um, I'm in bed pretty early. Aaron is asking if it's fun to drive. And yes, this F Sport is pretty fun to drive. Um, the, the handling and the braking actually to me are more satisfying than the turbo the new turbocharged engine it just uh it it doesn't have a great sound to it i know it's more powerful than the outgoing one but it's kind of meh for me um but the the tuning of the braking and the handling is night and day compared to the outgoing model um the only downfall for this transmission there's a pretty hard downshift from like second to first i don't always feel it but when i do it is pretty interrupting speaking of interrupting there's a start stop feature on here that i forgot to mention and it's actually pretty good um it's not very intruding compared to a lot of other automakers out there so lexus has done a good job making sure it's a smooth transition on and off for the gasoline engine even though this isn't a hybrid mr diaz is asking if this is less comfortable the f-sport than the normal model and i would say absolutely yes it's definitely stiffer um, the wheels and tires in this particular package don't help the, the ride quality by any means. Um, and the seats are a little bit more hugging, which is a good thing in the F Sport because these hug very well around the turns when you do push it. But if you're just cruising, um, smaller wheels and tires and the non F Sport is definitely going to be a smooth and more comfortable ride. Russell's asking about the lettering on the back and how it, wide it is. Well, I'll just to put up a couple pictures that I took with a tape measure. Stimmy's asking if this engine would be a good replacement for the V6 and the RX. And I would say it's equivalent. You know, the, the V6 in theory would be more reliable, less things to go wrong with it. It's tried and true. Um, but it has worse emissions and you can thank the governments around the world for instilling all these laws to shrink engines, get rid of gasoline engines. It's not, I'm sure it's not what Toyota wanted to, to put a boosted engine in their vehicles, but that's just the landscape we live in. And it is more torquey than the V6. It doesn't have quite the same top end power, but it is very responsive and it's probably a better overall engine than the v6 if you're not counting like long-term reliability because we don't know that on this engine yet is a ride quality good enough to hang with the germans i would say it's comparable the, the all the lexus products are comparable to an extent to the germans they just don't always have that top end performance mason's asking about the differences between the nx and the rav4 well they're they're massive now um the nx rides better feels better it's quieter uh, way more power. That's one of the biggest differences. Better transmission. I mean, I could go on. It's it's a way better car overall than, than the RAV4. Ms. Green is asking, can it fit a stroller and two roller suitcases? And I would say yes. I threw a stroller in there and some random things I had laying around, including a car seat that I haven't used in a long time, and it fit them no problem with room to spare. Excessive handshakes. What is the square footage of the grill? We'll put up some pictures for you and you can do the, the math yourself. It's big and it's probably the last generation of large gasoline spindle grills from Lexus because we've seen their prototypes for their electric range and the spindle grill is essentially part of the body and it doesn't look as gaudy or sticking out. Chevy SS is it better than the RDX? RDX is a better panel roof I, I can say that. Um, the engines are comparable I would say the transmissions are comparable the all-wheel drive systems are comparable um, the RDX I don't think looks as good even though it just got a refresh. Well, it does have more interior space than this NX. And when you're talking about the infotainment integration, this is way better than the RDX True Touch interface. I, yeah, I'll take this 14 inch screen just about over anything else in the industry. So it is better than the RDX, but if you need more space, go with the RDX. And if you don't care about infotainment as much, maybe go with the RDX but the fact that you only get one power plant in the RDX and you get four here on the NX you just have so many more options and to me the hybrid like I said earlier is the way to go and I feel like I've covered just about everything on this NX so I'm going to go ahead 
and summarize it. So for me, my recommendation for the all new NX is the 350H hybrid. It's got the two and a half liter naturally aspirated engine with 239 horsepower. It actually has the electric motor from the larger RX 450H hybrid. And that vehicle is just a hair slower than this vehicle to 60, but you're gonna get nearly double the fuel economy. And it's a quieter experience. The engine isn't as loud. It's a smoother experience because you don't have the shifting of the gears. And yes, my phone just dropped its um, Android Auto wirelessly, which happens from time to time in this vehicle. Uh, so that happens with wireless connections. I've seen it on multiple makes and models anyways. And the 450H Plus is gonna be really hard to find. Also, that's a really, really nice variant of what you could say the RAM4 Prime, and that vehicle's hard to find, and dealer markups are notorious on that vehicle. So you could save yourself probably the, the pains of finding a 450H and trying to get it for a good price and just get the 350H and take that savings you would get from being in fully electric mode for all those miles and just go with a lower price 350h and what about the 200 or the 250 well my sister actually has the 250 and it's a good vehicle the problem is it's underpowered compared to this model and the outgoing model um, but it is going to get you pretty good fuel economy definitely superior to this and if you don't need all that speed that's a good way to go but again 350h to me is by far the best model you can get for this new nx the technology is fantastic it's not perfect um, like my wireless charger in here doesn't really work with my phone and like you guys just saw the wireless connection did drop but the 14 inch touchscreen even though android auto just takes up a small square of it it still is huge it's easy to get to the customizable steering wheel that integrates with the heads-up display is really really nice you don't need the heads-up display save some money I'm telling you guys with the mark 11 and if you can get that definitely worth it i don't know why it rattles a little bit on this particular model i don't know if it's early production things going on but i've never heard that sort of rattling before on uh, mark levinson system but if you want to see more coverage on the lex nx make sure to check out my first hands-on impressions when i went out there late last year to uh, around phoenix arizona area to drive the new nx it was an unforgettable experience beautiful cars and beautiful landscapes so make sure to check that out if you want to see the 450h plus and the 350h driving impressions but i'm going to end it there i'll see you guys down in the comments below and if you if you made it this far in the video and haven't hit the like button i'd really appreciate that that helps me out on the channel and subscribe if you're not for more lexus news and reviews i don't think there's anyone else on youtube who covers lexus as much as me historically so anyways guys hate to pat my own back there i feel like an idiot but it's true it's true anyways i'll end it there thank you so much for watching and i'll catch you in the next one peace out mm -hmm.